Welcome to a very special edition of Tony Plays. It's good to be back in the DM seat, everybody. I am Dan, your host today. And with me, I have two other hot sauces in my Hot Ones lineup, starting with Tony. How's it going? Hey, everybody. My name is Tony. Being a player for the first time in a long time, and the hot sauce I'm going to be is Cholula, which I put that on everything. Love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. All right. Uh, Jared checking in. Uh, Hot sauce. I'm going to have to go with the classic. Everyone loves it. It's uh, a staple. It's on, should be on everyone's uh, dining room table. I'll be a judge of that. What's the classic? Yeah, it's uh, in the Hot Ones lineup. It's the farthest uh, mild one. It's got a great taste. Pretty wonderful. The Hot Ones classic. Yeah, that is actually a super tasty hot sauce. I do have it in my kitchen right now. I uh, am Dan again. I would be the uh, Lola's hot sauce of this lineup. Not technically in Hot Ones, but it's my favorite hot sauce brand and my go-to. Now, before we get into it, I think I will be in charge of the rundown today. Uh, we'll skip whoever's day it was because this is uh, kind of last minute. So. <laughs> <laughs> and my rundown today is a uh, what do you what do you call it? A what do you call it like a service announcement when you, uh, PSA. you're doing a commercial? A PSA. Today is a PSA. I got points for that one. You do get points, Jared, for that one. Thank you very much. Today is a PSA. If you have not done it and you were an artist. Mm. Please send fan art. Please, please, please send us fan art. <laughs> I, oh my God. I would love nothing more. We've never, we've had uh, maybe a poster. We had a cool poster, but I would love to see some Minis, <laughs> Armos, DM, Drell, Jer like Reginald and Sid fan art, whatever you want to do. I just want to see fan art. It's the only reason I do this podcast. I don't even care about these guys. I just want someone to do fan art. <laughs> <laughs> please draw me like one of your french maids please yeah <laughs> the moment we start getting like any kind of fan art like i don't like that's when we made it like you know what i mean type of thing that's how you know like, yeah that's <laughs> i just i can't comprehend i'll frame it and hang it up like the fact that we get like like we've gotten some mail from people like that blows my mind for real to go to that length and like create some kind of fan art would just blow my If mind. you do want to send us mail, we do have a PO, PO box down below. P and if you do happen box. to send us, uh, or make rather, if you do happen to make any fan art, just put hashtag DND404art on Instagram and Twitter. And I want to say we will read it and we'll give you a shout out. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we'll talk about we'll it. Also, accept share. telegrams. Singing telegrams. Yep. Uh, singing telegrams. Singing telegrams. <laughs> uh, faxes. We take faxes. We take faxes. Well. We have to set up a fax line. <laughs> <laughs> Wire transfers. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll talk about that Welcome to the Kambuki Isle Fighting Pits. Many have entered, few have survived. Put on your gear and get ready for combat. And we don't have any recap today because this is an anthology, of course. So we're just gonna get right into it. Down from the misty mountains through the clouds, past Lord Baron's Divider, over the city of Aramore, past the ocean, and into the Kambuki Isles. We find ourselves in the lush, tropical island country. We find one character being dragged in by a guard, just freshly captured. It is a big, hulking lizard with a bag over its head. Gets thrown into a cell. You hear the cell door lock. Tony, would you take off that bag and please describe your character? Uh, I get thrown into the cage and I take off the bag and barely fitting within the cell is this massive eight foot tall, wide as a brick house lizard folk named Rocco. Um, he has bluish greenish skin, a very short tail, but it's a good size. It's a good size. It just didn't grow that much when he gained in mass. He has very smooth skin around his face, big green eyes. 
and he has spikes in the shape of a mullet on top of his head. And he's just like shaking the cage. Like, oh, let Rocco out of here. I am a great and mighty warrior. And I shake the bars. Yeah, the guard looks at you. Uh, yeah, you can uh, fight for your life up there and maybe you'll get out. All right, that's your job. I point to him, I go, not only will I fight for my life, but I will fight for your heart. What was that? He's walking away. I can't hear you. I got stuff in my ears. I got other business to attend uh, to. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. Oh, the wind. You find yourself in a, like you said, very tightly packed, rusty, one-person cell, just a little too tight for you. There are cells to your left, cells to your right. There's a skeleton in a cell to your right. And to your left, you find an Eladrin. Jared, would you please describe your character? All right, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> so, um, my character is very similar to looking to an elf, but more blue in hue from the Fell Wild and is hanging out. Uh, I see this big guy come in and uh, taking up all the room. Not happy about it. <laughs> Frown on the face. Yeah, you've been here probably uh, through maybe two, two or three battles already. And, and made it through pretty well. Not too badly scraped up. You do maybe have a scar on your chest or somewhere. And there is uh, a little halfling character in the cell next to you. <laughs> oh, good luck in there. It's uh, going to be uh, quite uh, quite a bloodbath, I think. Have you guys been in the blender before? I stick like my snout just through the bars because the only thing I can fit. Be like, what? What blender? What, what, are we, what are we putting it? Where are we? Oh, you're in for quite a treat, I tell you. It's going to be a spiky day, I must say. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does it spiky mean? Spiky speaking in riddles. <laughs> it's like my little... <laughs> it's just my mouth sticking out of the box. <laughs> oh, boy, I've been through it once. It uh, almost... Uh, Almost died in there. Uh, not a fun time in the slightest, but uh, if you make it out, I'll share some of my uh, homebrewed prison wine with you. And you see him swigging out of like a stone cup, something foul smelling. I smell go, <laughs> toilet wine? You've heard of the toilet wine. I oh, love the toilet so wine. Can make it out of there. Oh, I'll be sharing many with you to come. Here's a shot here. Pass it on, you ladron man. Pass it on to him. He passes a shot through the bars to uh, <laughs> you, Jared. Um, um, <laughs> What's your character's name, by the way, Jared? Spunky. Spunky, take a take a shot and pass it on. <laughs> he shrugs and is just like, all right, and then takes a drink and then passes it. I inappropriately like take it with my lizard tongue. Oof. Delicious. Man, I went, I'm glad I went first. <laughs> Everybody give me a constitution saving throw uh, real quick. <laughs> I always happen to say this shit when Tony's drinking. <laughs> uh, I'm good at those. I got a seven. Oh, uh, that's a six. <laughs> you both puke immediately. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> it's all over the floor in front of you. It's dripping on the bars around you. Oh, first time I see. Is that acid? I uh, tell you what, you'll get used to it being in here. We don't have much else, so uh, uh, it'll end up being the best thing you have in days. I promise you that. And as you're speaking, a uh, few guards uh, come by with keys to unlocking both of your cells, not this uh, halfling's. And you do see a hooded figure with a beard coming through the hood. You can't see their face. Muscular, veiny. You can tell that they're kind of wrinkly. They must be pretty old. And you see a guard maybe 30 feet away in another cell getting dragged out. Yeah, come on, get out of here. Boy, he gets slammed in the head, head to head, and a bunch of guards have to restrain him. Come on, get him out of there, you motherfucker. And he gets dragged away, and uh, they start opening your cells, and there are four guards to each of your cells with spears as well. All right, have a good one, guys. And the guard looks at you, hey, uh, let's not have uh, any fuss like that one. Uh, we're feeling pretty... Uh, Trigger happy today, and you see some of them pointing their sticks at you <laughs> with their spears. What's uh, what's the guy in the cell's name next to us? My name is Crawl. Crawl, let me get one more, one more swig of that wine, <laughs> and I take a take another drink. This guy has wine, and you see a guard reaches to the cell and pulls Crawl up. 
<laughs> no, I swear I don't have any wine. It was, it was just a joke. And you see the cup fall down. Oh, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Well, I'll be talking to you later, bud. <laughs> Dark on him. <laughs> you just and that was the best me. thing that's happened to me in days as, I'm, as I walk away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cut, so, through, cut through. Cut <laughs> through. Uh, you're shackled by the feet and by your wrists as they Ugh. carry you away. You do see as they pull you closer to what looks like a really rickety wooden elevator shaft, per se, you do realize that they actually start pulling you apart and separating you as you start going in. Hey, what's the pointy stuff? What's the pointy part? What's the pointy part? And I'm like shuffling. Get in there! <laughs> you get shoved in there. I'm Spunky's cracking his neck the entire time, just like getting warmed up. And they, they flip up the cage to this uh, shaft and they, of course, go, all right, hands through the bars. Hands through the bars! You see them sick. poking through the bars. <laughs> <laughs> I shiver through. <laughs> yeah, and he, he unlocks your shackles, takes the shackles. I was like, all right, uh, maybe we'll uh, be seeing you again. Uh, bones and flesh out. <laughs> Good luck. And uh, they pull a lever. You too. And you, too. you go up one level, and now everything's dark. Same thing with you, uh, Spunky. They do the same thing. Bars down, unshackle you. You go up one level, everything goes dark. We're going to cut out. We are now in the Kambuki fighting pit. In the aisles, we have many different fighting rings, uh, but this one is called the Blender. You hear an announcer. You now enter the Kambuki kill zone. Welcome to the pit, everybody. Today, we have a spectacle to behold with blood to be spilled and bones to be crushed. The Blunder has taken many of the strongest fighters from all over whom Brea and today will be no exception. If you direct your eyes to the southern walls, you will find your first contender. Kambuki born comes Rocco the Thundertide! <laughs> and you hear just a very rickety chunk and then and you now find yourself in a pentagon shaped fighting pit wooden floors crates everywhere you can't quite see but you think there might be uh, like a hay pile in the distance you can't see over the crates but you can see that there's almost like a maze and the announcer continues in that you see people cheering in in seats and the, this is like a uh, an 80 foot deep pentagon shaped hole and the announcer goes if you look to the north you will see your next fighter all the way from the riverwood forest murph the morphling spunky click click spunky. click 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 you find yourself up in this pit as well, Jared, or should I say Murph the Morphling? <laughs> and now you might have realized Spunky. Name's Spunky. <laughs> this is where I'm going to have fun with my players, everybody. They are helping me play test something I'll be doing in another campaign of mine that I have with my college friends. Welcome to PvP. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Uh, Popping you over to the map. How dare you? I was not prepared for this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's why. That's why I had you DM me your shit. Oh, I'm gonna look. First thing I'm gonna do is look around at the crowd. Like, oh. If I knew this is where I was going to be, I would have came willingly. And I <laughs> raise my hands up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You see some roided out barbarian in the crowd <laughs> freaking out. He likes you. He like he like originally had some sign written for the other fighter coming in, but then changes it to your name. <laughs> it's like, let's go, Rocco. <laughs> and I'm like flexing. <laughs> The announcer continues. And last, but certainly not least, the Red Guard Deserter, Kale the Conqueror! And you see this giant hooded fighter with a scar over a white glazed eye. He pulls his hood off and goes, 
Yeah! Woo! It's his first time in the pit, everybody. Coming all the way from the other side of Humbre on the East Coast. Used to be a red guard, now in the pits. We'll see how he fares. And uh, if you guys couldn't tell, we are uh, way in the future. This is old Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm a boy. Okay, I'm a boy. My boy. My boy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's probably like 75 years old, but still roided out and thick. I'm glad he li- lived to uh, live another day to eat another Zuni. To eat any other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do see his eyes are a little glazed over in red. <laughs> now, everybody, if it's your first time, you're in for a treat. If it's not, you know what to expect. Time to bring out the spikes! And you see from all the edges of the walls, all the way up these 80 feet, (laughs) these metal spikes shoot through holes in the walls and start thrusting in and out. Ooh, ah, ooh, ow, ow. Like a grinding machine. Ow. And you see Kale on the side. The what? (laughs) And he gets blended, dead. (gasps) Oh! Everybody goes. (laughs) (laughs) The what? (laughs) Uh. It is now just you and Jared. (laughs) Mm. How this is going to work. Obviously, you can see a bunch of crates around you. Um, These crates you cannot see over if they are double crossed. If they are single crossed, you can jump onto the crate. Mm. Um, There are hay bales and junk piles around uh, that are rough terrain or possibly to hide in. If we do any hiding actions, just tell me where you're hiding. I'll take your token off and I'll mark where you are if you're out of sight of the other player. There are, you'll notice there are chests around the map. Uh, When you open up these chests, there will be items in there, possibly. Mm -hmm. And look out for the spikes. Do we have any of our gear? You have all your gear, yeah. You, you see there's a there was a chest that popped up with you with all your gear. Okay. Oh, nice. So you put on all your gear and you get ready. Fighters, ready, set, battle! Roll for initiative, everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I got have, I have an 11. I have a 13. Murph the Morphling gets to go first. <laughs> Spunky. All right. Oh, what to do. Oh, what to do. <laughs> okay, so are the spikes moving in at all? or They're they're moving. So, like, if you hit the wall, you can guess you're going to get hurt. Okay, they're, like, kind of a chainsaw more than they are, like, yeah, closing it's not in moving towards in. the middle. It's not making okay. the arena smaller. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Okay, I was just curious. If I look up, is there a roof? Um, It is open, open skies, but uh, give me a perception check. As you're looking up. I got a 13 for perception. Yeah, with a 13, that'll do it. Uh, uh, Tony, if you want to give me one as well, you can. Perception check? Sure. Ooh, a 19. Yeah, you both can see that there is some sort of magical field at the top of this arena. Like, Ooh. how tall? Uh, it's 80 feet. You're going to take your turn. Uh, let the audience know, by the way, what kind of class you're playing. This is not how I expected it to go. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to be messing me up today. <laughs> you could have did a prison break. It was right there. We right? missed it. <laughs> it was. It was. It was an option. <laughs> All right. As I'm moving up into the, uh, and finally get up to the, uh, the battleground and now that this is, I've done a few of these, uh, kind of finished cracking in my neck and doing my stretches. And then the uh, magic dampifying amulet finally falls off. And as it falls off, um, my character quickly almost disappears into the background. The crowd notices that uh, a druid is now back into the battlefield and has turned into a saber to tiger and has gone to uh, stealth. <laughs> <laughs> a saber two tiger going into stealth mode. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to transform, it's a bonus action. Yes. So once the thing goes off, I can go into s- stealth. 
Yes. Uh, so yeah, you can take a stealth action. I haven't done stealth you, before, uh, so... You Maybe tell some... me, uh, DM me where you're going on the field. Actually, Tony, I'm just gonna mute you real quick. Okay. For deafen you. Now you can't hear us. So, uh, tell me, tell me where, like, down to left three, kind of, chess moves. So, with stealth, is, do I move slower, or is it the same speed? Same speed, you just need to tell me where you end, and that's where you'll hide. Use your hide okay. action. Cool. I'm gonna, is the thing on the left, in between the chests? That's a pile. That's like a pile of debris that you could hide in. Yes. Cool. Um, yeah, I want to go over there and make my way towards that chest. Uh, and I can move forty feet. So forty feet that way, and a kind of beeline for that chest. You could, if you wanted, you could make it to the chest. Can I? Okay. And he would not see you because he is behind crates right now. Oh yeah, because the X ones are. And you could too use your. Sick. You could. It's up to you. Do you want to use your action to hide near the chest or open the chest? It's an action to open a chest. If you can't see me, then yeah, I'll open the chest. You're still going to make a stealth check to be quiet. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get Tony back first. Make a stealth check to be quiet as you're moving, and then Tony, you're gonna make a perception check to see if you can kind of tell where he's going. Okay. Oh man, I really wish I didn't dump wisdom now. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever this roll is, I get plus six. So yeah, you got that eleven. And what'd you get, Tony? A nat twenty. You can't you can't see, but you know he definitely ran to the northwest. Mm -hmm. I smell a litter box. <laughs> I'm gonna deafen you for just a second, Tony. Okay. And then, are you using an action to open this chest? Yeah. So roll a d3. Roll a d3. Start. Oh, and I have to stop. I got a two. All right. Roll me a d38. <laughs> 38. Yeah. Holy sh 23. Uh, you you receive a sword of stealing. So that's my bonus action, a movement, and that's my action. Okay, cool. Open the chest. So now we're going to move to Tony. You do hear the announcer like, Oh, looks like he got a nice shiny item. Looks like we're going to be in for some more fun. <laughs> As it moves to your turn. The announcer may cuck you, by the way. <laughs> In this battle. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Um, the first thing I do is take out my spear. I take out my weapons. Um, I take out my spear and shield, and I clang them together like Spartan style. Ching, ching. Ah, and I try to amp myself up. And what I'm going to do is, after hearing some rustling to the Northwest, hearing the announcer give away that like he may have just gotten some nice. Um, you said these boxes are about high, high up. 10 feet. So I take out my spear and sh my spear and shield and what uh, Rocco is, he's actually an eldritch knight. And you kind of see that the spear that he's holding has like this weird glowy uh, energy to it as the weapon is bonded to him. This is his go-to weapon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move 10 feet. Uh, I will be climbing, I guess, to get on top of these boxes. Yep. Yeah, so unless you have unless you have a climbing speed, it'll just take double your movement. That's all. Mm, no, I have a swim speed. Yep, yeah, nope, yep. Uh, so I'm gonna take. I'm gonna use 15. 25. It'll take. It'll get cost you 30 to get on top of that tall box that you're on. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my movement to get on top of the boxes that so I can get a better look at the arena around me. And I'm gonna do it in a cool jump motion. <laughs> Yeah, you hop up and you immediately see to the northwest, this Aladrin has just opened a chest. <laughs> now that you're up on a box, you can see him. Um, so he's just like, he's just standing in front of this chest, right? He's like, this, is he behind any type of cover? Um, technically from there, that would be like half cover. I point at him with my shield, with my shield arm and be like, I am sorry, wintery one, but I never back down from a fight and I chuck my spear from on top of the boxes, um, and I'm going to attempt to hit Spunky. Yes, so that is half cover, so you do have plus two to your AC. I rolled a 16 to hit. A hey, that hits. So that's just gonna hit. My rules are that when you just hit, it's a glancing blow. I know that's a bit different from what you do, Tony, but on just hitting on the dot, it's a glancing blow, which means you take half of whatever that damage is. Okay, I'm going to hit for... 22 points of damage, so have that'll be 11. Uh, 11 of that, or six of that, would be psychic damage. 
And then as the spear glances right by you, like I guess uh, goes right past you, hitting the floor, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and use my bonus action to recall the spear, and I'm just going to chuck it right back at you with my second attack. Right. And uh, because you did hit him, the normal damage is halved, but your psychic damage will not be halved. And then my second attack is going to hit with a 14, which I should be glancing. Uh, no. That does not hit him. Oh, okay. Um, and then for my free action, I'm going to be like, I am sorry, Snowy One. Can you get that back, by the way? You think you can just throw that back over? Make it a fair fight? <laughs> you know, just, uh, just give it back. Throw it back over and I pound my chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's going to be my turn. At the end of your turn, you do hear some gears and another kind of like... <laughs> as it moves to Morpheus's turn. Something else is happening. I am going to then... Uh, going to go stealth. Going in stealth. We're gonna see if it. Uh... Tell me uh, again. DM me where you want to go, and okay. I'll tell you what you can do and if you can stealth. Because he is above the boxes now, so he can see where you're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you want to end behind cover, you can pick where you'll hide. You know, you are gonna make that check at disadvantage, and uh, Tony would make it with advantage because he's up so high. Are you okay with that? Hmm. He still has a good vantage point. I'm that okay with a, that. A good path where you can do that. I know. Yeah. I'm okay with that. that. <laughs> Is that still what you want to do? Let me. As he's thinking, I'm like cheering the crowd on. Uh, after I threw the spirit, I just like point at it and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you see the guy with his crossed out sign like, let's go, Rocco. Kale is dead to me and literally dead. On my chest, I point <laughs> at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that what you're doing? In that case. Again, even if he sees yeah. you, you're behind full cover. You know what? Why not? Yeah, roll that uh, far, perception how... check, Tony. That's a 17 and a... That's a 17 for me, but... <laughs> All right. So I should be able to... I roll a disadvantage, right? Yes. I don't think it matters, but... Ooh. Is there anything you can do with a action or bonus action to help you out? Or yeah, is so that... that's just... Uh, that's my movement. So then... Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say what happens. So, uh, Tony, so you see him go northeast behind some rubbish, and then this saber tooth tiger, and then this tiger darts behind these uh, ten feet tall boxes, and you can now no longer see him. Okay. I am going to do a bonus action while running in that straight line. Okay. So, basically, I went from the the chest and went. Beeline it straight towards the center of the uh, into the arena. And what what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my racial talent, which is a bonus action, and I can teleport <laughs> to an unoccupied space I can see. So as I'm running, I'm going to teleport <laughs> right next to Tony and, oh. <laughs> and pounce him. <laughs> 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 You will and definitely get advantage for doing that. Perfect. Well, as, as Rocco is clearly hyping up the crowd. <laughs> uh, if a target moves at least 20 feet uh, in a straight forward, the creature that he hits with a claw attack in the same turn must succeed a D DC 14 saving throw. So I'm obviously using my claw attack, which is... <laughs> Good God, that damage, uh, that was a crit. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage did you do? <laughs> 16 slashing, slashing critical damage, which is 10. I don't know. It's still slashing. Cool. It was 26 total. And then you have to roll a DC 14 uh, strength Ooh. saving throw. Hey, he's good at Six that. Succeed a DC 14 strength saving throw, which... Is that your proficiency? I don't... He's the giant eight-foot-tall lizard. <laughs> hey, you're throwing things, so I th th thought it might be dexterity. My, my, my have He's a just checking. He's just, just I'm just asking. Oh, uh, I got a 19. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Okay. Did it. So you're not prone. Okay. So you, you're you hyping up the crowd, Tony, and you all of a sudden you hear just... Poof, poof. <laughs> this tiger is right next to you. Uh-oh. Slash, slash, the crowd goes wild. Oh my goodness. 
gave him the one, two, slash. Nobody saw that coming. Who knew this druid could teleport? My goodness. Oh, kitty got claws. Kitty got claws. And I look at him <laughs> right on top of the boxes. I took 16 damage, right? 26. Oh, 26. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Oh, I'm so I wish I took that potion. Ugh. Like <laughs> oh, he got claws. I turn around and he go, but now you're in my house. And I use my bonus action and I get my spear back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're right in front of me, right? Awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my first attack, but I'm going to use my cantrip. Green flame blade. You see the spear burst into green flame. Yeah. And that cantrip allows me to attack with it. As I go to attack you with the spear, it's going to ignite on fire. And I'm going to hit for... Oh, that's a nat 20. Jesus. Oh, that'll hit. I think it does. <laughs> that's going to be 18 piercing damage with 10 fire damage and... 14 psychic damage. <laughs> this spear just like right into the side of your gut. As you feel the cosmic pressure from the spear, from the psychic and the burning flame that which it ignited. Yes, yeah, so you take 42 points of damage and you see you see as you stab him that he go he goes and then he morphs back into his Eladrin. Uh, is it Eladrin? Your Eladrin form. A snow Eladrin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I knocked him out of his tiger form. Your saber tooth you tiger did. form? Yeah, you yeah. knocked him out of his saber tooth tiger form. <laughs> I point the spear at him and go, Do you yield? Wield? <laughs> Wield? Do, yield. Yield. Do you yield? <laughs> uh, this letter. And I, I make a Y <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my hands. We got a battle, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like the tiger just lost his last life. That kitty is no more. My turn. Correct? It is your turn. <laughs> All right. He's got something planned. I don't like this. This is going too smooth. <laughs> this is going too well. <laughs> Getting knocked out of my, my form, gathering myself, all of a sudden uh, locking eyes with him. And as I lock eyes with him, all of a sudden you could see my face narrowing a little bit and fangs coming out. And then all of a sudden I am a <laughs> giant constrictor snake. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh oh, <laughs> that's not good. So that's my bonus action is shape is sh uh what is it called? Wa wild sh wild shape. Wild shape, yeah. Yeah, wild shape. So for that's, my that that is your last one, by the way. What? You said I got four. No, you said you got four. You were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, we said we got three. I thought that was the thing, and I was like, I get one more. No, you get to pick what you get to turn into. Uh, Wait, this is your last use. could only wild shape twice? That doesn't seem right. No, no, no. I had a bunch of options to choose from. Oh, and Dan was like, okay. you only can choose two. I don't want to get, like, I feel like I can game the system pretty hard in this with one of the other ones, so I'm not going to. So yeah. we'll try this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For my action, I'm going to use Constrict. I get a plus six to hit. It reaches five feet one creature that was a 25 yes i'm yep. going to react to that i'm going to cast shield and add five to my ac so whew, i put my giant my little buckler up and then you see a magic force yeah like cover me uh all around similar to what's uh, over the dome so he beats you by two now what his ac is all the way up there <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he went for the high ac build so that means he's got an ac of 20. uh sure yeah. <laughs> sure ridiculous ridiculous you see when i shield i'm actually pretty scared like ah the snakes i don't like, like snakes so then the only thing I can do at this point is move because I've already used my bonus action, my action. As the snake coils around you, Rocco, you you instantly put a shield <laughs> up <laughs> just in case. As it's about to get you, the announcer's like, oh, I thought he had it, but looks like that ball is keeping the snake at bay. Uh, that first attack was pretty nasty. I'm not going to lie. And I'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm feeling it a little bit. I'm feeling it. Um, Well, first, I'm going to use my green flame blade again. My spear it, uh, glows to like this purple spiral energy, then phew, ignites it to a green flame again. Attacking for 22. Uh, I'm going to assume that hits. And then I'm going to deal. Uh, that's going to be 22 points of damage. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to use Hungry Jaws, which is as a loser folk, I get to use my bonus action to bite. And then I'm going to bite you 
for what a 24 does a 24 hit yep yep nine points of damage and i gain three temporary hit points off that and then uh as i'm slashing into him be like actually i think you taste pretty good i'm not gonna lie i think that tastes pretty good i just want to put you on a stick and i'm just gonna turn you over you know after i slay you i hope you could stay in your wild shape so i can put you on my spear and i can turn you i can put you on a spit roast have some steak for dinner no hard feelings. No hard feelings, Winter Elf. Uh, that is my turn. That snake is getting shedded. My goodness. Not looking good for the snake in there. Oh, my goodness. Do you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? You hear the beating of a drum. Boom. 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 It's time to blend. And you are going to see on this third round of battle i finally get my layer action <laughs> oh what <laughs> everybody make me a dc 15 dexterity saving throw please Ooh, i i do those uh oh i don't do those nine <laughs> nine okay nine ten eleven oh actually damn it you guys just missed it <laughs> you see that <laughs> you see that all these spiky walls the corners stay put but then the middle portions of the spike walls with all these spikes going in and out go and slam closer. And it is now a tighter arena as these spikes are coming towards you. And uh, fortunately for you guys, you are just out of the five foot radius where it would hit you. Mm. I thought it was on that box. Damn it. <laughs> I was gonna get you. Mm. Scraping by, almost got our contestants, but they're gonna live another day. All right, Snake Boy, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to constrict again and see what happens. Got a 19, which I guess doesn't even hit, so that doesn't matter. So then instead, we will then use a uh, greater potion of healing as the bonus action. You certainly can. Guards, guards, toilet wine, toilet wine. <laughs> That's a fucking technical foul. <laughs> you see the guys, guards drinking their own wine in the stands, just cheering. <laughs> the stolen wine. Where's the sportsmanship? <laughs> <laughs> One of them flips you off. So you get uh, 16 health back. Yeah, I guess that's all I can do. I've never seen a snake drink a potion before. You see something new every day in the Kambuki fighting pits. What will Rocco do next? What I want to do next, I'll tell you what I'll do next. I'm going to go in on this snake. And I flex the crowd right before I'm going to take a massive attack on him. Um, A massive attack? Yeah. What's a massive I'm, I'm sorry, little snow elf. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, once again, use my green flame blade as I go to ignite my spear once more to hit with a net 20. My goodness. Jesus. That is going to be, uh, it's going to be 13 piercing. Wow. Two ones. Uh, two fire damage and 16 psychic damage. That's my first attack. My second attack is going to be a, my bonus action is going to be a, another spear attack because I am a war caster. I can make an attack as my bonus action if I cast it a cantrip as my main action, which is another spear attack. Ooh, it's going to be a 12 to hit. Doesn't hit. You do see this snake shrink and turn back into an Aladdin. Oh, Snow Elf, get back. <laughs> In the distance, you do hear through the walls. Chunk, chunk, Oh, that's the arena. I, can I use, can I still won't use my movement? Uh, I'm going to roll off the boxes uh, north to get away from the wall. Yeah, you'll take an opportunity attack. Yeah, it's fine. Gotta go. And I'm going to roll <laughs> off the boxes. Yeah. And move just about 10 feet away from him, putting myself um, in front of him. And so the wall is uh, behind him. So Spunky, you get to make an opportunity attack. Uh, I don't know how to do that. So you, you can attack with your quarterstaff, your short sword of life mm -hmm. <laughs> stealing. <laughs> yep. We'll no, go ahead what? And do that one. Yep. <laughs> go ahead and use that puppy. 16. Mm, nope. It was a good try. Not though. worth it. Hey, a free attack is a free attack. You can't knock the attack of opportunity. How will this Aladrin go? What will he do? <laughs> right. He's been here three times before. Made it out fine. Will he make it a fourth? Uh, I jump to the middle and with my bonus action, I guess. Throwing Hail Marys. You can jump that far with your bonus action? Jeez. Yeah. Can I, do I get an attack of opportunity? He's jumping over me or? Uh, it's a teleport. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, so poof, poof. <laughs> yeah. With a bonus action. Base step. Oh, right. That's a good one. I made it so that we can hopefully use it together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast Flame Wall. Flame Wall? <laughs> wall of Fire. Hell yeah. At third level? Fourth level? Yeah, wherever the max is. Fourth level. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll cast it... I guess right in front of me. How high does it go? Uh, 20 feet. So anyone in, within 10 feet of it takes damage. Is that a structure in front of me? It's rough terrain. Oh, okay. It's a bunch of junk. Bunch of okay, junk. so I still get hit by the firewall? Oh yeah, you'll definitely get hit well, by the firewall. I mean, you have to do a dexterity save, so if you- Yeah, give me that dexterity save. Uh, we, we do those, kind of. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, I'm gonna get <laughs> take full damage. I rolled a six. <laughs> so you take- 19 damage. Things are heating up, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like this lizard's getting roasted. So then um, I'm going to move. You know what? We're going to go back here. Boop. And do a little boop. <laughs> <laughs> Not even being sneaky. You're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. There's a flame wall. You could have told me where you wanted to next time. <laughs> it, uh, this is going to be over pretty quick. Like, It's All not right. a big deal. That's, uh, that's where you want to end? Yeah. You started here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, Jesus. Okay. DC 15. Well, the way I've been rolling. Hey, a six. As <laughs> you start to move across that floor, it crumbles beneath you and you fall toward the spike pit. Awesome. <gasps> cool. Well, I mean, it could put me out of my misery right now. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you take nine points of piercing damage. Okay. And then you can climb up the five foot and go 20 more feet. So I can make it there? Yeah, so you head northeast away from the firewall and make it behind a box into like a little corner. And that finishes your turn? Mm-hmm. Looks like he's trying to avoid Rocco, but who knows if he'll avoid the walls. What's Rocco gonna do next? Uh, Rocco's gonna second wind. That's what Rocco's gonna do. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and second wind. I'm gonna get back, ooh, 16 points of health. And then, uh, oh, I see this giant flame wall. I'm like, oh. How would this moves? What do, you, what do kitty cats do moves like that? Well, he was a cat, to be fair. To be fair, he was a cat. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's true. I crack my neck, and I am going to... I'm going to cast Expeditious Retreat, which allows me to use a dash action as a bonus action, rather than a full action. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to move 10 feet, uh, or 20 feet through the wall, going in this direction. I'm gonna do like a bit of a zigzag direction. Show me your, yeah, show me your path again. To go through a flame wall, make me a DC 15 dexterity saving throw if you could. Sure. Ooh, that's gonna be an 18. Hey. Yeah, as you run to your right, to the eastern side, hitting some crates, the floor beneath you starts to crumble and you realize just in time and kind of hop onto the uh, rubble. Oh. And then uh, keep on moving. Oh, shake your floor, shake your floor. Okay, and I run through the firewall. Yep. Uh, how much damage is he going to take from that firewall, Jared? Uh, spunky. Spunky. Yeah. 20. Ooh, I'm going to make a dexterity saving throw, which is a 16. Hey. After going through the flame wall, like shaking off the flames, do I see uh, Spunky ahead of me? Yeah, he's right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> he's right there. Ah. I point my spear at him with my free movement. I go, it's time to end, end this. Little snow elf. And I spin my spear in a really cool way. Mm -hmm. And I point to the guy cheering in the crowd. And I blow him a little lizard kiss. The, the crowd cheers some more. They're getting excited. You still have your number one fan in the in the northwest corner here. Yelling your name. <laughs> Rocco, let's go! You were always my favorite! <laughs> With this crossed out sign. You too, <laughs> random stranger. <laughs> uh oh Looks like Christmas came early! <laughs> Spunky, make me a dexterity saving throw, please. DC 15. Uh oh. Son of a bitch. Nat 20. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, you <laughs> you learned your lesson from the first time. It got way too close for comfort. And uh, the second you hear that noise, you turn, you see it coming right at you, and you move forward, just avoiding these spikes. Oh. <gasps> oh, wow. Perfect. <laughs> I was hoping for something like that. What do you mean perfect? I don't like that. What do you mean perfect? So you kush, kush. All right. Just hop forward away from the spikes as they enclose battle royale style. What is this for me to look like a pentagram? Get your chug jug ready. <laughs> as I see the lizard jumping through the fire, 
I was prepared for him to start running at me. And as he's landing and spinning his stupid little spear, it's good size. I cast <gasps> polymorph. <laughs> Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> no, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, hold on. What's that save gonna be? <laughs> it's gonna be a 16 wisdom. If you could roll that saving throw for me real quick. I have a reaction. Ooh, uh, oh man. <laughs> Do I have anything? <laughs> uh, well, I really wish I didn't dump wisdom. <laughs> um, okay, he's a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> That's a two. <laughs> <laughs> what do you turn this giant lizard into? <laughs> tell you, it's not going to be a fucking frog. <laughs> something with the lowest... Oh, no. <laughs> something with the lowest speed ever. Um, <laughs> Can I pitch you an idea, Jared? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I think I got one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I turn him into a seahorse. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, a seahorse? Bro, is that even a thing you can turn me into? It is actually, yes. What? Unfortunately. Oh, that's not good. I didn't even know he could do that until he said it. <laughs> uh, you have zero speed. You have 20 feet of swimming speed. All right. Uh, I am a seahorse, and I'm both shocked and appalled. <laughs> Describe what happens to Tony, Jared. So as he's spinning his dumb spear, I think back to all those times when I was in the forest, where all the water was, and one of the most worthless creatures that I can remember was a seahorse. <laughs> and at, at that instant, <laughs> he falls to the ground, flopping around. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I have a bonus action and movement. I'm gonna move to him. If I want to pick him up, what would that be? Um, that would be your whole movement to pick him up. Okay. But I would still make it a check. Oh, to grab the flopping around. I th I'm sorry, Tony. Would, I think that would be with advantage to pick you up. To pick me up? It's a grapple check, right? Yeah. He'll roll with advantage. You'll roll normally. Am I a dextuitous seahorse? I mean, yeah, actually. Yeah. You have plus one. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Roll a strength check with advantage. It's funky. 15. Okay, here we go. 15. Uh, four. <laughs> no, uh, okay, that's right. All right. <laughs> that is your movement. Perhaps you can still work together. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that coming, ladies and gentlemen. Just out of reach from the spikes and immediately turned this lizard into a fish or did the lizard do it himself i don't know <laughs> maybe it's part of his plan um yeah so it is going to go to the seahorse what actions can i do i can only breathe underwater i will tell you what's about to happen so how suffocating rules work a creature can hold its breath for a number of minutes equal to one plus its constitution modifier. When a creature runs out of breath or is choking, it can survive for a number of rounds equal to its constitution modifier, minimum one round. So at the end of your turn, Tony, you will be turning back into yourself because you have suffocated. <laughs> yeah, I have negative one to constitution, so. <laughs> Uh, I panic. If you want to try and yeah, if you want to try and get I try out of his grip, you can. Yeah, I'm going to wiggle and panic because I can't breathe. <laughs> um, is that a strength check or is that a dexterity check? Um, you can make me uh, either or, but you will be using your horse stats. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Spunky, you uh, can make as well a dexterity or a strength check against his okay net 20 oh my god wow. oh no i lied it's a dirty well, 20 it's a dirty 20. <laughs> i can roll Is a 19 really? my bed <laughs> yeah it's i rolled it's a 19. wow i got a 30 20. <laughs> yes you wriggle out and plop back ah! onto the ground <laughs> and as you hit the ground shaking vigorously poof, you turn back into a lizard uh, on the ground on your back <laughs> I'm so small. 
I was so small. <laughs> which way? Because it was it was a nat twenty. Which way do you want to fall? Do you want to fall down to the right to the left back? Like where do you want to go? Right where I am is fine. Right where I am. Yep. Yeah. I was so tiny. <laughs> oh, 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 my tail's still there. Oh. That oh. negative one constitution modifier saved your ass. Because <laughs> otherwise he would have been uh, that way for at least two rounds. I had plans for that. You hear... Right. Oh my gosh. Misses the spikes into a seahorse back, back into a lizard. <laughs> and then, but then right as that happens... You hear the spikes come back in. Let's see where it lands. Boom. <laughs> Tony, you missed by millimeters. Rocco. Ooh, 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 my butt. Oh, oh. Rocco falls to the ground, looks backwards on his back upside down to see a spike going in and out a millimeter away from his nose. So if I wanted to get to the middle, I would take an opportunity attack, right? If I wanted to get like... Over in um, this area. He is not up right now. Right now he is prone, so he's not. Oh. Mmm. Yeah. Can I bite? Can I, I can't bite. I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 All right. You can definitely do that motion. <laughs> you would have to do an acrobatics check. That is a double box. Okay. So it is 10 feet tall. So you'd have to do an acrobatics check. I'm just gonna uh, use my last uh, face step to uh, get up onto the box. And then with it goes me in the center, him, and then the the whirling blades of death. I'm gonna cast Thunder Wave. <gasps> it's oh no, <laughs> oh no. Each creature in a 15 cube oriented from you must make a Constitution saving throw. The save is a uh, 2d8s. It's 5d8s at fourth level. Yes, but it's pushed 10 feet away from you into the spinning blades. First roll me that damage. Let's just see how much damage he's taking. It was 19. Okay. So 19 so, damage, no big deal. No big deal. What is the saving throw? Constitution. All right, Tony, make me that constitution saving throw, please. What do I need to be? 16. So you need to get a 17. You need to get a 17 or higher. Ah. Uh, hmm. Curse only up to second level. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a Constitution saving throw. I get, I get plus two. Hey, anything can happen. It's D and D. Anything can happen. Wait, did you get minus one for your suffocation? Oh, 15. First, you take that 19 points of damage, and then uh, you get hit into the spike wall. Uh, okay. <laughs> Boom! You get knocked back. Thunder wave. <laughs> Not just a little. <laughs> Gets it in there. I'm excited. And then you are going to take all the rolls. Don't worry, it's not too much. Yeah. It's it's only 64. So. <laughs> what? 64 damage? 6 D4. Oh, oh god. Oh. I was uh. like, "What?" <laughs> Wait, let me done just that right off the bat. <laughs> if somehow this damage is maxed. <laughs> it's a D4. It's always max, bro. Whoop. You take 18 points of piercing damage. <laughs> <laughs> that was really high. Oh. Like a machine gun, you see this lizard get stabbed a bunch of times. Thunder wave, boom, spikes. And he is looking bloodied, holes through his body. He is looking fucked up. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. I throw up. <laughs> I throw up. Oh my goodness! It looks like the lizard is down for the count. Wait, no. He's getting up. Wait, I can still do my movement, right? You can. I want to get the fuck out of there, right? Yeah, do your movement. Tell me where. Tell me where you're going in Discord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just roll me a stealth check as you're running over, and then Tony, obviously, you make me a perception check with disadvantage. Uh, it's an 18. With disadvantage? Wow. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Roll a 19 and a 16. <laughs> And Jared, your stealth check? Getting there. Do MS Paint, bro. MS Paint that. <laughs> oh my, Atlanta. 17. Rocco, you get up all bloodied and you see him hop off the box and you know he did not go far after he hopped off the box. But you don't know where he is. Okay, uh, I go ahead and I get up. Oh, oh, oh my back, oh my back. 
my back. Ugh. Yeah, and you move forward out of the spikes. Oh, okay. Cheeky move. Cheeky move. <laughs> Is the firewall still up? I wish, but no. That was going to be the ultimate thing. I was going to chuck you in there. I <laughs> thought so. I get up. Uh, I'm like looking. I'm like, where is he? Where is he? I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna put him full of holes. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk. <laughs> I'm going to walk around the box where I am, where the firewall was, to kind of get in front of this chest. Do I see anything once I get in front of the chest? As you're moving, give me a perception check. <laughs> this is so sad. I just wrote a DC. That is a natural one. <laughs> Yeah, so you, as you rush forward, you look to the right, you don't see anything. You look forward, you don't see anything. You look to the left, nothing. Hmm. I see hay bell, and I see chest, and then I see skeleton next to chest, and I see chest, but I see the skeleton next to chest. Hmm. <laughs> ah, uh, what are the odds this is a mimic? Uh, it's dead. It's probably high. It's probably high. Um, uh, but I'm so damaged that I need to know what's inside of it. Oh god, do I do it? Do I do it? Do I do it? Oh, is Mimics a saving throw? Was it a hit? Is it a roll to hit? It's a roll to hit. Mimics, oh, I'm medicating. I'm sorry. Ah! I am going to. Can, is the chest locked? No, the chests are locked. Can I open it with my spear? It is a reach weapon. I can like it is, maybe you will still have to use your action if yes, you try to open it. That's fine. I just want to open it <laughs> ten yeah, so feet you do away. It with your spear. And I flick open the chest. Okay. Uh roll me a D three. Uh I rolled a two on a D four. That two's fine. Yeah, two's great. Cool. And then uh a D thirty eight. I put a link in here where you can do custom rolls. D thirty eight. A nineteen. Uh you receive a flame tongue weapon. Ooh, sing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I have the power. Wait, what is it? A sword or is it a spear? It is uh, any sword. Oh, this is actually kind of useless to me. I'm a spear fighter, and I put in my sheath it. I just sheath it. <laughs> uh, but you can use uh, a bonus action to speak this magic sword's command word, uh, causing flames to erupt from the blade. These flames shed bright light in a 40 foot radius and dim light. For an additional 40 feet, while the sword is ablaze, it deals an extra 2d6 fire damage to any target it hits. Mm. Really wish it was healing booze. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. Mm. You're all different. Yes. <laughs> Could have been. Uh, I am going to... I didn't cast a bonus. I didn't do a bonus action yet. Um. Bonus action? <laughs> I am going to bonus action... No, I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to stay where I am. I think he's in the hay pile, but I'm going to stay where I am. <laughs> and I'm just going to be on guard. And I am my turn. Where are you? Ching, ching. And I'm slapping my spear against the shield. Somehow, by Melora, this lizard is still going. Oh, my, folks. Looks like he's going for the chest. And he is close by. But you know what time it is. Spike wall. Spike wall. Oh God. Spike wall. Spike wall. Oh shit. Woo! Oh God. We might die. <laughs> we might both might die in this. <laughs> Let me move the wall first. Really didn't expect this is how it was gonna. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, both so of you dead. make I'm me a oh, DC God. 15 dexterity saving throw. Ah! I got 11. Oh uh, yes! 17. 17? Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> There's a chance this battle's over. I'm just gonna let you know right now. Oh no. There is a chance that this battle is over. For who? Um, Why? Me? Um, I'm looking at your health. There's yeah, a chance. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. I'm gonna roll 4d4. The map looks like a pentagram, Dan. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You take eight points of damage. Are you kidding me? It rolled low. Hey. So, Tony, you're next to this chest as you see. Uh, which way do you want to go, down or down to the right? Me? Yeah. To the right. Down to the right. You just want to be on the chest? Yeah. <laughs> the, second, the second you grab this item, you see. You see yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Either way, Spunky go, ah, <laughs> And now Spunky is on the chest looking right at you, Rocco. <gasps> Murph, formerly known as Spunky. Oh, there you are. I found you. And it is now Spunky's turn. They are both looking worse for wear. Anyone could make it out of this battle. One more round, and they both fall to the spikes. Oh, oh God. Wait, 
Do you want a Hunger Games this? You want a Hunger Games this? <laughs> if either of them make the final blow, the spikes will stop. And you see the crowd goes hushed. As all you hear are the spikes going. Ch -ch 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 oh God. Spunky, what are you doing? Well, shit. I think there's only one thing I can do, but there's nothing else. If if I look around, is there anything that we can? Yeah, is there a miraculous way out? <laughs> is there a way that we like? Do I see a mechanic somewhere that, or like a, a spinning cog or a? Uh, I mean, you can both make me a perception check if you like. Oh my God, why don't we do this? I'm really good at these. A twenty-one. Twenty-three. I better be seeing some things. You think maybe if you had the time to search, oh God, you could figure out a way through one of the boards maybe, but you also know that it there could possibly be magic under the boards regardless because you know they have a magic barrier up top. Mm. It's uncertain, but you think if you searched, maybe you could find a way through the boards. Uh. But you know that if one of you dies, the spikes will stop. Mm -hmm. Or the next round after both of you go, the spikes are coming in. Mm -hmm. Another thunder wave? <laughs> oh yeah, no. Yeah, I think that's I think that's all I can can do if we don't have but it'd be fucking cool if we band together and got the fuck out and lived to fight another day. If you both band together, I will give one of you, whoever decides to roll it, advantage on their like search check mm. to see if you can find something. Yeah, I think we got it. I think it'd be cool. Rocco. Yeah. Rocco, I see a way out of this. Yeah. I don't want to have to have to do this to you, but I think we need to figure out how to get through this floor. You want to take that spear you got and start busting ass out this uh on this floor right here? <laughs> yeah, I could I could do yeah. Oh, I scratched my head. Yeah, I could do that. We need to start looking. We don't got a lot of time. And uh, the two of us start wailing away at the at the floor. You're both going to roll to hit with advantage. Roll to hit? What are you hitting this floor underneath you with? My both wisdom. You. My wisdom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm just going to give it a... Ah! Spike's coming closer. <laughs> can I use flaming sphere, right? I can just use magic on it. Oh, yes. Okay, I see. Yeah, you could get up on the crate and do that while also hitting it with his spear. Sweet. Unless you're doing something else, Rocco. I don't mean to put movements into your mouth. Yeah, I just want to see how successful he is. Wow. I'm waiting waiting for Rocco to make his first move. <laughs> no, it's your turn first, so you, you definitely have to go. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. So you are casting Flaming Spear. Okay. A five-foot diameter sphere of fire appears in the wood you were just on. You hop up onto a crate, spears poking inches away from your buttocks as you're up on this crate. This wood is susceptible to fire, so you can roll 4d6. Wait, um, you can roll 8d6 damage Ooh. because you're doing it at third level and it's susceptible to fire. And you just get to roll it, so roll that first and let me know what happens. 34. This wood busts over in flames. And you hear the announcer, whoa, looks like he was aiming for the lizard, but just missed. And he's, he thinks there's nothing odd going on. He just thinks you're trying to, you know, hit him with fire because it's so close. And you look underneath and you see that when you look down is still a wooden box, essentially. Like, like you blasted open the top of a crate, but there's no spikes in it. Something that we could jump into, like it's an open crate or like the, the top of a crate? Five foot wide, five foot tall. It'll be cramped, but you can do it. Ooh, I could get into it. He wouldn't be able to. You can both get in. It'd just be really cramped. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Wait, it's five by five. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Rocco, yeah. jump in, <laughs> quick. <laughs> and do you jump in as well on your turn? Uh, yeah. Boom, you hop in. I'm in. Jump in, Rocco, hop, you hop in. <laughs> You're now shouting up at Rocco to jump in. Rocco, what are you doing? I look around me. You hear, chick. Chick, chick, chunk, like it's about to go. So if I get in there, the spikes are gonna go over us. Is that what's gonna happen? Possibly. Sounds like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's the, where's the, what's the dice that he always says that we gotta bring out? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to hurry up on this one. Uh. Yeah, you got uh, ten seconds. Yeah. Ten, nine, 
Eight. Hurry up! I never told you this, because we only met a few moments ago. But the person who took me from my family was an Eladrin. And I attack him. I stab him in the face. <laughs> you I, fucking I, asshole! I, him. I go and I kill him. I'm gonna go to kill him. I <laughs> stab him while he's in the hole. I go in. I'm going to take this opportunity well traversed in gladiator combat. Rocco knows there's only one way wow. this can end. Uh, and I, he is going to take advantage of it. And I am going to attack with green flame blade. Which is a blade. 21 to hit. Mm -hmm. My goodness. That is going to be nine points of piercing, four points of psychic damage, eight points <laughs> of fire damage. And then I'm going to use my bonus action, which allows me to attack with my spear again, <laughs> which is another 21 to hit, which is what six points of damage followed by <laughs> eight points of uh, psychic damage. Is he dead yet? And so I'm like, ah, and I'm stabbing chaotically. What is happening? There's some bamboozling down there. Looks like someone jumped under it. I don't know what's happening down there. Can anybody, we need to get some guards on this. And you, ah, just stabbing him in the hole. He's down. Oh, he's down? Oh, then I'm going to use my, um, I would like to action surge if he's not dead, dead. I guarantee you it's not going to outright kill him, but you can use your attack. So that first round of attacks take a death 50. saving throw away. You have two attacks? Yes. Yeah, you get another two attacks. So the first attack is going to be with a spear. That's an advantage because it's down. 27 to hit. Uh, that's going to be eight points of piercing damage with an additional uh, seven points of psychic damage. And I attack him again with a 13. 13 to hit now. That's not going to chink it down. And I'm just like yelling into the pit like, Aah! as the blood is like spewing <laughs> up like this is like a, all this blood coming up from the from the ground as you're plunging your spear in, do you do anything else no i end my turn before your turn ends i end my turn on a psychotic rampage okay so you end your turn where you are mm -hmm. and you uh plunging your spear ah, you realize that you have him extremely close to death just so fucking close to death but he is still breathing uh, when it gets back to your turn, I do have rules for this in these kind of combats. You can still pop up with death saves, assuming Tony doesn't kill you first. <laughs> so when it gets back to your turn, you can roll that death save. Above you here, what is happening? We need to get some guards down there. I can't see after he jumped into the box. Shh. Clunk. The wall! Because you did not jump down, give me a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Oh, get, get out of town. He's I dead. asked All you right. if you're doing anything else. Oh. <laughs> you said no. <laughs> it's very, it's fair, it's fair. 13. <laughs> and you will take 17 points of piercing damage. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> 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 what is happening? Get some guards! <laughs> the crowd goes silent. <gasps> Everybody's watching as the dust settles. You see the layers of the spikes. You don't see anything because you're both down. The audience sees the dust coming up from the bottom. The layers of the spikes going <laughs> back into their original position. Nobody can see you guys. You are both now in this hole. We are now going to roll death saves oh turn by God. turn. <laughs> <laughs> to see who comes oh out of this. My Lanta. What is happening? Get the guards down there. We need to get get medical on this. Somebody get down there. As you hear things around, you hear like in your unconscious state, you just hear like. You have an automatic failure already, by the way. It's funky. Yeah. Because of Tony. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> Send us the medical. That trick works every time. Every time. <laughs> so you're just going to roll me a d20, just hit an 11 or higher. Drum roll, please. Mm -hmm. 14. That's a success. Woo! Huzzah. <laughs> Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happened? Did you, I don't know who survived. Like, I don't even see him anymore. Where are they? Uh, Rocco. Oh, okay. Ah! Yeah, D20. It's an 11. Ugh. Oh, that's a save. Oh. I'm totally gonna get up first. 
the magic comes down above the ceiling. It's Bunky. <laughs> Death saving throw. And here we go. Ugh, it's a four. Another failure. <gasps> I spit up some blood. Gross. The magic wall on the ceiling is completely gone. Rocco. Oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> no. So if I get one more, I'm gone, right? Yes. Get it open. Get it open. I don't know. I'm, I, there's so many keys. There's so many keys. I don't know what you want. Ready? Roll that d20. <laughs> Six. Oh. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> Door flies open. All right, let's go. Rocco, roll your death save. Oh, a five. <laughs> <laughs> Footsteps. Oh. <laughs> All right, and we're going to figure out what's happening, folks. We're going to figure out. Everybody stay in their seats. Everybody remain calm. Uh, uh, don't worry. We'll get your bets figured out. Roll your last death saving throw, please. Yeah. Oh, my God, an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. <laughs> and the guards get up, and they look into the hole, and they go, huh, ugh. Wow, yeah, uh, another double death. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Man, uh, looks like uh, looks like you won a lot of money there, Alec. And you see a guard on the right. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> he fist bumps the guy. Uh, man, that is like such low odds, Alec. I can't believe you got that. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco, Rocco the Thunder Tat, sign it off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Alec won money? Alec won money? Yeah. Alec that won son money. Son of a bitch. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. I. <laughs> Damn it. That's so funny. <laughs> Fucking Thunderwave. It was all mechanical. Thunderwave, man. God, we got a lot to talk about in the after show. <laughs> oh, you betrayer. Yeah. <laughs> wow. More like Rocco the betrayer. I can't wait to railroad the next episode. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> There's going to be no one safe. Oh, is this a major character? Fireball. <laughs> oh, I see it. <laughs> my goodness. Ugh. Thanks for playing. Thanks for uh, play testing yeah. one of my maps that is uh, for my college buddies. If I knew that what we were doing going into it, oh my God. Yeah, I would have. So many things different. So moving forward, we need to have, we need to do more. Kim, I want to host more Kimbuki Fighting Pit episodes. Yeah. Real bad. <laughs> <laughs> and moving forward, you'll know it's that kind of PvP thing, and you'll have more insight going into it. So I'm going to just say this real quick. My face step, I can take one person with me the entire time I'm doing that. And I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be great. He, you know, he can get up close. I could take him in, and then we both could wail on somebody. <laughs> nah, I could have taken the one where I charm somebody next to me or fear them. But I didn't take that one. I didn't take those. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, man. That's what you get. That's what you get for dumping constitution, wisdom, and charisma. For real. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't know he was going to be fighting against you going into no, this. But no. we'll talk more about the going the after show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you have listened to this one. These special episodes are always a lot of fun. I hope you two enjoyed the map as well. We'll talk about the things you liked, didn't like, things that maybe we could change uh, moving forward because that's the purpose of playtesting your maps. Always playtest your maps, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. I was a scapegoat. <laughs> 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 Y'all have anything to say before heading into the after show? Yeah, don't trust your friends. <laughs> <laughs> we died yes. in a warming embrace. Right. But I just let it be known. Jared died first. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Say goodbye, everybody. <laughs> or goodbye. Later. I'm Drell. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, later, guys. And now it's time for the Patreon Shadows. First up, we got the Blood Shard Bandits. And the first member of the Blood Shard Bandits is Ulrich Shield Dust. Ulrich Shield Dust is still stuck in the freezing tundra of North Trillis. After recently escaping the cave of a dangerous snow monster, Ulrich requests that you hold all questions about the event until a later time. He's just not Yeti to talk about it. Next member is Benjamin Hayes. Graduated recently from the Sigi College, he is now a part of the Blood Shard Bandits. However, Benjamin's celebration and jubilation turned to dread as he was recently struck down by a member of the Red Dawn. But wait, there's hope. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. 
Our next member is Julius Kendrick, and Julius is still on the run, however, he is not hiding. Crimes have been reported of Kendrick's evil doings. The most recent report is that he recently slain someone, a recent college graduate of the Sigic College. How tragic. Our last Bloodshard Band member is Reigns, and he has been reported lost. Oh no! Recently, Reigns was last seen headed to North Trillis to go storm chasing. However, no one has heard from him in quite some time. The frozen tundra can be a harsh place, and certainly no place for Reigns. And now we're going to move on to our Sigic College alumni, and first up we have Andrew Hall. Andrew is one of our newest members to the Sigic College. A bright, inspiring future lays ahead, but at what cost? Will Andrew use his powers for evil? Who knows? Too soon to tell. Next is Artemis, and Artemis is on patrol. With the recent discovery of Kemi Joe's new friends, Artemis eagerly awaits for the return of the Bloodshot Bandits. Although he has been spending way more time in the dorm room showers recently. For some reason, hmm. Anyway, next up is Robert Crisp, and Robert has done it. His new invention worked. Their most recent prototype did not explode when powering on, hooray. Nearby towns and hamlets are safe for now. However, his new breakfast machine tends to overcook the eggs. And speaking of rotten eggs, it leads us to our last stage of college member, Saint Chaos. Chaos has been busy at the Tinkerer College pranking the Alchemist students. Recently, he stole all the Alchemist's boiling flasks and replaced them with phonies. The student nurse has been quite busy. And now we're going to move on to Humbrae's heroes. First up is Alex Judge Dredd, most feared bounty hunter in Humbrea, and he's on a well-deserved vacation. Good for them. Next up is Angel the Ranger with their adorable Pitbull companion. Currently, they are patrolling the Riverwood Forest. Rumors say that the Koatoa sightings have increased over the last few months. Next up is Man with Glass and he's currently missing. <gasps> Man with Stone has been listed as suspect number one. He must be found at all costs. Lastly, we have Sergio the Vagabond, Traveler and Tavern Brawler. A recent bounty was placed on Sergio's head for fighting in a tavern. Some say it was out of self-defense, but one thing is for sure though, it was quite mysterious. And that's it for this week's shoutouts. If you would like to be added to this fabulous list, head over to our Patreon and find out more. Until next time, everybody, see ya.